Today, I would like to teach you how to use synthetic division with the following example of 9x cubed minus x plus 2 all being divided by 3x minus 1. So the first thing is, you want to set up your table. All right, Take a look at your dividend, which is the term that's to the left of that division symbol. Locate the highest power of x, and then just add 1 to it. And that will tell you then 3 plus 1, that'll tell you how many columns there needs to be Okay, inside of this little black, you know, right angle thingamajig. All right, so we need four columns. Now what that means is that we're gonna have four coefficients in here, four coefficients. But when you look back at this, you only notice you have three. You have three coefficients. You have a coefficient here of your x cubed. You have, remember there's a one here, you have a coefficient negative one of your x term, and then you have a constant. Uh-oh, where's the fourth one? Well, you have to make sure you have a certain pattern here to your polynomial. You're missing the x squared term. In other words, in order for this synthetic division to work, you need to have an x cubed term, an x squared term, an x term, and a constant term. If you had x to the seventh, well then you better make sure you have a sixth, and a fifth, and a fourth, and a third, etc. Okay? Now, if they're missing, what are you going to do? Well, this is what you're going to do. You're going to add them back in. And you might say, well, how the heck am I going to add it back in? Well, watch. If I were to add now into this equation, so let me just minus x plus 2, I'm going to add something in here, okay? If I add this 0x squared, did I change the value of the original function? No, I did not, because 0 times anything is just 0, and 0 doesn't, it's almost like it's not even there. So notice how it looks identical to the original. Now that's essential though because you have to identify what that coefficient is of your x squared term. Okay? Now, with this in hand, just write in the coefficients. So you always start from highest power all the way down to the constant. So the first one is 9, the next one 0, the next one here is, remember, negative 1 because it's a negative x, negative 1x, and then the last is going to be a 2. Done. Now you've got to turn your attention to the divisor. What you're going to do with this divisor is you're going to take it, 3x minus 1, and set it equal to 0. You want to find out when this polynomial here turns out uh, to be 0. What x value gives you a value of 0 overall? So set it equal to 0 so that you can do a little algebra on it. So that's 3x is equal to 1, and then over 3, over 3, x is then going to be equal to 1 third. Now the benefit what the benefit is here is this is now going to be your value that you're going to plug in here, outside of that little black angled thingamajig. So it's one third. So now that you have your top row fully uh, filled in, now we can finally do the procedure of your synthetic division. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to take this 9, drop it straight on down, and write it at the bottom. That's why we have a, a uh, red box here. You're not going to plug anything in, just take whatever coefficient that is, drop it all the way down. Now here's the procedure. You're going to take this value and multiply it by this value to find the value in the next adjacent cell. So you can do that out on the side, right? One third times nine. Remember nine is the same thing as nine over one. When you multiply, just multiply the numerators and the denominators together. Okay, so one times nine is nine, three times one is three, and nine divided by three is just going to be three. So this value gets plugged in here. Then what you do is you're simply going to then add together this column for a total now of three. Then what you're going to do is you're going to repeat the process. You're going to take though this value and now multiply it by the value on the outside. So the only thing that's going to change now here is that you're not multiplying by nine anymore. You're multiplying by three. And that's the same thing as three over one. And that's three over three, which is the same thing as one. That value now goes into the next adjacent column. One. Add these two together to get your next value, and that's a zero. Cool. Then what you're going to do is now you're going to take this term, multiply it by this, okay? So obviously zero times that is just gonna be zero, right? We don't really have to work that out. That's gonna be a zero term, and then add this together, and that works out to now be two. Okay, so that takes care of all that. Now what you have to do is just keep in mind what these coefficients will represent, okay? Basically, this is what it is. This will be your remainder, always, okay? The next term here is your constant term, your coefficient, your, your, your constant, well, coefficient of the constant, but that's really just the constant, so it's just a constant term. 
then this represents the coefficient of your x term, then this represents the coefficient, don't add a plus, that's just x, then this is the coefficient of the x squared term, and dot, 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 okay? Now before you start writing your quotient, before you start writing your quotient, and by dot, 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 I mean it would continue out to x cubed, and then, you know, x to the fourth, etc. however many you had. Now before you write out your quotient, you gotta do one thing. You gotta go back to your divisor, and check and see what the leading coefficient is of your x term. Whatever it is, I don't care if it's a 1, a 3, or 14 million. What you're going to do is you're going to take that value, the coefficient, which is a 3, and you're going to divide it into each of the terms except for accept. It's except, right? Eek. Except. 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 Whatever. Your remainder. <laughs> Sorry. <sighs> so, now when we divide each of these terms, we're basically going to get new coefficient values. So 9 divided by 3 is simply going to be a 3. 3 divided by 3 is going to be a 1. 0 divided by 3 is just going to be, I don't know, 0. And that's it. So these now are really your new and proper coefficient values, not the values from before. Okay? And keep in mind, this is your constant, this is your x term, and then this was your x squared. Now you can properly write out your quotient. So you have 3x squared plus 1x, or just plus x, plus 0, so you can write that in, okay? And then plus now your remainder, whatever this is, whatever the value is, you're going to plug it in, 2, and then over your divise or, 3x, 3x minus 1. If this were a 0, Right, zero divided by anything would just be zero, so this whole term would just cancel, okay? Cleaning this up then a little bit, it's just going to simply be 3x squared plus x plus now 2 over 3x minus 1. And this is indeed, ladies and gentlemen, your quotient, okay? That's the answer. Now what you can do is you can check yourself by simply setting up uh, an equation here uh, and showing what you've done. Remember, what you did was you took this value you divided it by this value, and that should have equaled now this value. So let's write that out on the side. Bam. So what I wrote over here is I wrote this term, which is being divided by this term, and that should then equal this term. Now, to check yourself, all you're going to do is you're going to make up a value for x. Choose one that's easy. Make up x is equal to 0. Take that x value now and plug it in everywhere you see x. Okay, everywhere you see x. So the reason why this works out to be nice and simple is because everywhere you see x, any multiplied terms or anything like that, they just cancel, right? Everywhere you see it. So just get rid of everything there. Okay, that all goes bye-bye. So now just check yourself to see if this is appropriate. What are you left with? We're well, left with positive 2 over negative 1. And what are you left with over on the other side? Positive 2 over negative 1. Hmm. Oh, are these equal? Of course they are, right? Negative 2 is equal to negative 2. So that just shows you that the quotient that we found over here, this quotient over here, is indeed correct. Okay? And that's all there is to it, ladies and gentlemen. So thanks so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it very much. If this helped you out at all, like, subscribe, maybe even tell some of your classmates. Or we got thousands of problems out there for you. Thousands, not only in math, but physics and chemistry as well. If you want to excel on your test, remember, on your test, they ask specific problems. That's what we focus on helping you through specific questions. You have to learn how to problem solve specific problems to do well on your test. And we got thousands of examples out there. So it's literally as simple as just finding our channel and just identifying those problems that you're working on on your exam. See a few done by us. Practice some on your own. And you're off on your merry way. Thanks so much for tuning in. Take care.